Slim Smith was a Jamaican recording artist whose bright career was cut short on October 12, 1972 in a tragic incident. Though dead at only age 24, Slim Simit left behind a list of remarkable recordings done both during his group and solo career. His voice was romantic, his music clean and conscious, and he was filled with ambition when his life was cut short on a dark and bloody October night in 1972. In this video, I examine the death registration form of this artist to see the exact causes of his untimely and suspicious death. This is an interesting and informative video you need to see. I am Nigel D. Salmon. Welcome to Jamaican Chapter. This is the death registration form of Slim Simith. I will be looking through the, the form to see the cause or causes of his death. And we, also, we will also look at his basic information and other information on the form. We'll start on the form by looking at the top. At the top of the form it says death registration form death in the district of Kingston parish Kingston below that in the first section it says place of death North Northumberland Lane, Kingston 16. So that's Northumberland Lane, Kingston 16. And Northumberland Lane is in Franklin Town. So that would be, so the full address would be Northumberland Lane, Franklin Town, Kingston 16. Let's scroll across on the right where we'll see the other section where it says usual residence of deceased and it is empty. There's nothing written there. It's empty. So the, his usual residence was not written here. But what I can tell you, of course, is that at the time of Slim Smith's death, he was living with his parents. And that address was right over here, you see it, Northumberland Lane, Kingston 16. I'm not sure if that was his usual residence or it was that he was living with his parents at that particular time. Well, well we, we can't tell from this form. Um, so let's continue. We are studying the left of the form looking first at his basic information before going to the right of the form to look at the causes of his death. Continuing on the left of the form, we are on the section where it says particulars of deceased. 
date of death 12 October 1972 in other words October 12 1972 so Slim Simith died on October 12 1972 below that we see full name and they wrote Keith Simith yes below that we see sex and they wrote male so we all know he was a male beside that we see condition and they wrote unknown now in this section where it says condition what it really acts in for is is to state the marital status of the deceased so was the individual um if it's a male and that individual has never been married then you would put bachelor if it's a female who has never been married you would put spinter if it's someone who's married you put married if it's someone who was divorced you put divorced if it is someone who whose spouse had died if it's a male you put widower and if it's a female you put widow in slim simit's case they wrote unknown slim simith never got married he was never married and as far as I know, he never had children either. So he was a bachelor. A bachelor would have been best to put there. But you will see later on why the person put unknown. Uh, and that's because there was no informant at the time. He was filling out the form. I will explain that later on. Below that, you have age. And they put 24. So yes, he was 24. And speaking of his age, why not talk about when he was born? So... Keith Alexander Simith was born on December 5, 1948 in Kingston, Jamaica. He attended Chitola Park Primary School in Hannatown, Kingston, and later the school we now call Kingston High School. And he did well in school. He did well in school. Let's continue down on the farm. Below his age, we have occupation or calling. And they wrote vocalist. That's okay, but a better term that I would use is recording artist. You know, from an early age, he had a passion for singing. Before I continue about his career, let me say that the, his, the stage name Slim Simith was given to him by Sir Coxon Dodd. Yes. In 1966, uh, Coxon Dodd looked at Keith Simith and was like, Man! You are so slim. You should be called Slim Simic. From no one youth. Your name is Slim Simic. 
And that was it. The name Slim Smith came about. Now, for anyone who doesn't know Cox and Dodd, since I mentioned his name, Sir Cox and Dodd was a famous Jamaican producer and founder of Studio One Recording Studio. So as I, so as I was saying, Slim Simit had a passion for singing from an early age. Let's take a look at the footsteps of, of his career. Around 1963 to 1964, he was temporarily a member of an energetic youth band called Victor's Youth Band. And that was temporary membership. In 1962, a schoolmate named Winston Riley started a singing group called The Techniques. And Winston Riley recruited Slim Smith as one of the first members of the Techniques. Here is a photograph of the groups, you know, in early years. They were very young in this group and looking so handsome and elegant. Just look at those outfits. Now, at the back... At the back is Winston Riley, the founder of the group. He, you can see that he's throwing some kind of gentleman's troops at the camera. <laughs> uh, Winston Riley was born in Denham Town, Kingston, Jamaica on May 14, 1943. Throughout his life, he was a singer, songwriter, and producer. As a producer, he launched the careers of several artists, including Buja Banton and Frankie Paul. On November 1, 2011, Winston Riley was at home when a gunman shot him in the back of his head. He was in his 60s at that time. He was rushed to the University Hospital of the West Indies, where he was put in a medically induced coma. But he died on January 19, 2012. So he received a tragic end. Okay, so still continuing with this beautiful photograph. Um, standing in front, Winston Riley, second from the right, is the man, Slim Simith. I would say that he was the only one in the picture who was not completely ready. And if you ask, why is it that he was not completely ready? Well... His lips were just dropped open. <laughs> you know. Oh, that's, that's just minor details anyway. In front Slim Simith is another member. And I think this is Frederick Waite. So Frederick Waite migrated to the United States in the, in, in the late 1960s. In the United States, he had two sons who were members of the band called Musical Youth. So many of you who know Musical Youth, that band that sing that fam famous song, Pass the Dutchie on the left hand side, Pass the Dutchie left hand side, the Coburn. Yeah. So two of them in that group are Frederick Waite's sons. In the front, standing in the front, is Dave Barker. He was born on October 10, 1947 in Franklin Town, Kingston. 
He is a singer. In this year, 2023, he is, he is age 75. In 1965, though, Slim Simith left the group. He left the techniques. He then formed a singing group called The Uniques in 1966. The Uniques was made up of Slim Simith himself, Roy Shirley, and Franklin Waite. But Franklin Waite soon left the group and the group collapsed. That same year, in 1966, Slim Simith began doing recordings for producer Cox and Dodd. And as, and as I have said before, it was Cox and Dodd who gave him the name Slim Simith. The following year, 1967, Slim Simith revived the, the Uniques because remember he started the Uniques in 1966 but it, it, it collapsed. So in 1967 he revived the group with new members and these new members were Lloyd Chalmers and Jimmy Riley. Here is a photograph of the three of them. Jimmy Riley is on the right. Slim Simith is in the middle. Uh, and Lloyd Chalmers is on the left. Let me tell you a little about this group. Lloyd Chalmers died on December 27, 2012. That's years after the whole unique thing mashup, all right? So Lloyd Chalmers died on December 27, 2012 from a heart attack. And Jimmy Riley, who you are looking at on the, the right, he died on March 23, 2016 from cancer. So you can see that Slim Simith's career was bright. You know, he first started out in high school. He started out in the techniques. He, he, he formed this group, the Uniques. He did this solo career recording for different producers, including Sir Cox and Dodd. He also recorded for Byron Lee and so on. All right, let's get back to the farm. Enough of his career for, for this time, for the time being. So below occupation or calling, we have birthplace. Well, as I've said before, um, Slim Simith was born in Kingston. Okay, so before we look over on the right side where we, where we would see the causes of death, let's look at the bottom of the farm here. Now, the reason why I'm going at the bottom of the farm here is that I notice that it is completely empty, unlike the other death registration forms that I read out on this YouTube channel. You will notice that in this form, it's completely empty. The, the section that says informant. And this section would have the name of the informant, the qualification, residence and signature the informant is the person who provides information about the deceased such as their age their occupation their marital status and so on but here 
there is no informant. Why was that? This particular death registration form was filled out in a special um, circumstance under special circumstances. You see, after Slim Smith died, his death was considered suspicious. The circumstances around his death was not clear. And so, a coroner ordered an inquest into, into his death. So you may say, who is a coroner? Well, a coroner is a government official who is empowered to conduct or order an inquest into the manner or cause of a suspicious death. In Slim Simmit's case, the circumstances surrounding his death were not clear. Was his death caused by someone else? Was it suicide or was it an accident? The inquest was held to determine the real cause of his death and also for his death certificate to be finalized. So the, the inquest into the untimely death of Slim Simith was held at the coroner's court in downtown Kingston and it was presided over by resident magistrate R.S. Sinclair who was the coroner. An inquest is a legal inquiry and it operates similar to a courtroom session. So family members who were witnesses on the night that Slim Simit died were summoned to testify at the inquest. Police investigation reports were submitted to the inquest. The post-mortem report and other documents were also submitted. At the end of the inquest in 1973, we now have the conclusion the official cause of his death was, uh, was written on this death registration form. Of, of course, it was also on a certificate filled out by um, resident magistrate R.S. Sinclair, who was the, the coroner. If we look at the bottom of the, the death registration form, you can see where it says Registrar's Certificate Entered by me from the particulars on a certificate received from R.S. Sinclair, coroner for Kingston Inquest, held 23rd August 1973. So the inquest into the suspicious death of Slim Simith was held on August 23rd, that's August 23, 1973. And as I've said, it's a legal inquiry and people have to come and testify as to what happened on the night that Slim Simith lost his life. Whenever time someone died and a coroner or 
whoever other official, whatever other official, ordered an inquest. It means that the death is considered suspicious. And they are wondering, was, he, was the deceased killed unlawfully? Or was it a suicide? Was it an accident? Or so on. So you can see that the death of Slim Smith became a legal matter. So, at the end of the inquest, the coroner issued his certificate and then this form, his, the, the death registration form, was filled out and the death certificate could be finalized so people who knew what happened on that night that he died they had to come forward and testify all right so let's move over now to the right side of the farm where we will look at the cause of death. So after the inquest and they made their ruling, this is what they said happened to Slim Smith. On the right of the form it says, let me get this correct here, it says cause of death immediate cause and they wrote death due to shock and hemorrhage due to mused whale brachial artery and that these wounds were self-inflicted by the deceased while mentally disturbed. All right, let's break that down so we can understand it. The first part of the cause of death reads, death due to shock and hemorrhage. Let's stop there. What does that mean? So, his body went into a shock. That's what it means by shock. And hemorrhage. Hemorrhage means that there is massive bleeding and it could be external bleeding meaning that you are bleeding the blood is leaving the body or it could mean internal bleeding meaning that you are bleeding on the inside so that's what hemorrhage mean massive bleeding so it's a death due to shock and hemorrhage we know what that means now then it say Due to mused whale. What does that mean by mused whale? Well, whale is like when you cry, right? You whale. But they are saying that he held back whatever he was feeling, the agony, the pain. You know, because mused mean that you hold back. You are just pondering to yourself. You are not expressing out what you are feeling. And then it goes on to say, brachial artery. And the brachial artery is the major blood vessel supplying blood to your arm. And it went, went on to say, and that those wounds were self-inflicted by the deceased while mentally disturbed why would they say that the wound to his brachial artery that's the artery the main artery in his arm why they say that it was self-inflicted and go on to say while he uh while mentally disturbed all of these things said here are a result of what was heard in the inquiry. 
the inquest, sorry, the inquest held in Kingston. So when they listened to the testimonies of family members, they were able to conclude and use these type of terms. So we now understand that when Slim Simith hand was cut on that glass window or glass door, his artery, the main artery supplying blood to his arm, was cut. And because no one inside the house came out and assisted him, he bled to death. He accidentally cut himself. So in conclusion, we can say Slim Simith died from shock and hemorrhage. And this was a result of his selfish family members who did not come to his assistance when he accidentally cut his arm on the broken window or door. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe, like and comment for more interesting videos like this.